Yo! What's up guys and welcome back to another one. I have some not so exciting news for uh, any of y'all that are non-residents to Kansas uh, that are used to coming here and hunting waterfowl on public lands. Hope. Oh, yep, yeah, it's been a while. Back in the old flower chair, y'all. If you don't know what the flower chair is, you probably weren't here four and five years ago. So this is uh, some, man, not really good news. I, I don't necessarily like to hear this news. Um, this is not in effect yet. This is just a proposal and we're about to get into why it was proposed and what it is. Okay, so I'm gonna read straight off an article. I have done some looking around and the best article, best write-up that I can find is uh, on wildfowlmag.com. I will actually put the link of this uh, write up at the top of the description below. Y'all can click on it, go read it yourself. But I'm probably gonna read it word for word uh, because it's written up really well and it's pretty long. So it answers a lot of questions. Now, number one, uh, I don't claim to be a professional on these type of politics. Uh, I usually don't cover politics at all or, or anything kind of related like this. Now, here is the title as it reads, Non-Resident Waterfowl Hunters Bearing the Brunt of Bad News in Kansas. Again, this is a proposal. This is not into effect yet. Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks has proposed limitations to non-resident waterfowl hunters. Let's get into it. I'm just going to read, so bear with me. I'll stop when I, when I can. Waterfowl hunting in Kansas has become a, a long-standing tradition for both residents and non-residents alike. There has always been an abundance of public and private ground to motor drive or walk into with notable destinations like Cheyenne Bottoms, Jamestown, McPherson, Quivira, and others that have become synonymous with fantastic fouling in the Sunflower State. That is correct. When the migration heats up in the heart of the Central Flyway, it's hard to pick a better place uh, to, to go waterfowl hunting. That was until now. Again, reading it word for word, I did not write this. All kudos to Wildfowl. Again, the link will be at the top of the description. All right, SD card was full. <laughs> All right, get back into it. Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks has expressed a growing number of concerns over their waterfowl populations and declining opportuni opportunities for its resident hunters. In a heated debate, that is both a waterfowl and a public land dispute, the department is concerned that due to technological advancements as, along with ample post-pandemic free time, I believe it, um, non-resident hunters are flocking to Kansas and out-competing resident hunters, all while putting too much pressure on waterfowl. This is according to a presentation from Tom Bedrowski, Migratory Game Bird Program Manager for KDWP. At a recent public meeting on April 27, 2023, after the commissioners universally accepted the season dates and bag limits, the public lands staff raised some concerns about this competition conundrum and shared their recommendations for changing the regulations. Again, this information is straight off of Wildfowl mag.com i will post the link at the top of the description in this presentation bedrowski pointed out this increased hunting pressure can affect waterfowl distribution and, and behavior greater pressure can reduce hunting access and decrease waterfowling quality overall this can lead to decreased hunter satisfaction among uh resident hunters Maintaining resident Kansas waterfowl hunters is a high priority and Kansas cannot maintain its waterfowl hunting heritage without some without strong resident waterfowlers. Bedrowski also stated a committee has been formed to examine the impacts of these pressures. So, um, man, I get it. I get it. Um, let's go through some of the uh, main topics here. To ensure the committee meets its goals, they've established five objectives. Here we go. Improve and create additional waterfowl habitat and waterfowl hunting opportunities. That's awesome because I feel like there's not a, a lot of public land, um, especially this year due to uh, due to the bottoms. Y'all, if y'all know what that is, being completely dry, it's looking dry again this year. So. Moving on, manage waterfowl hunting pressure and disturbance to benefit the waterfowl resources to improve waterfowl hunting. 
you know, they're right. The, uh, the, the public lands refuges, they do. They hold a bunch. Uh, ensure Kansas residents have waterfowl hunting opportunities and improved waterfowl hunter satisfaction. Evaluate Kansas waterfowl hunting license, permits, pricing, and allocation. Engage Kansas waterfowl community, guiding and outfitting industries, and Kansas elected officials to improve Kansas waterfowl habitats, waterfowl hunting, and also to encourage waterfowl hunting ethics. Completely agree with that one. So moving on here, um, this is one of this is a potential proposal. This is a long story short. This is a proposal for the potential changes, like the first changes. Non-resident waterfowl hunting on KDWP department lands and waters shall be restricted. So non-residents shall be restricted to Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays throughout the duration of the established Kansas waterfowl seasons, including September till season. Non-residents would not be allowed to hunt waterfowl on department lands and waters Wednesday through Saturday. This includes Weehaw properties as well. Oh, look at this. KDWP also plans to request that the Kansas legislature amend a big license number, uh, waterfowl habitat stamp, fees to establish a non-resident migratory waterfowl habitat stamp and add a higher fee than a resident stamp. That's new. Guys, uh, the reason I bring this up is uh, just, <clears throat> I know a lot of you do come in. Man, a ton of you come to the bottoms and, and last year it was dry. This year, again, like I said, not looking good. Now guys, I wanted to bring this to, to y'all's attention because I know that there's a ton of public hunters here on the channel, number one. And I know that there's a lot that come to Kansas, um, especially like till opener. Man, I have seen so many, so many people at the bottoms on opening till and opening big duck morning. It, it's, it almost gets to the point where, I mean, it's a complete war zone. Um, and I get it. I, I, I see where all this comes up. I, I see the issues as well. Um, I think that something can be done with it, but um, there's a lot of great non-resident hunters that work a nine to five Monday through Friday and being able to hunt Sunday being the only weekend, a lot of folks will probably take off Friday, come in Friday, hunt Saturday, Sunday morning, leave. I'm sure that's how a lot of folks do it. So all I want to do for y'all's sake is it just, if you have been coming, maybe you bring your boat and you just plan to do it every year, you might want to pay attention to this uh, so you don't show up on a Thursday and not be able to hunt, right? Just trying to look out for y'all, that's all. But if you guys have any more information, may I, maybe I missed it, maybe I didn't find the right article, maybe there's been some advancements in this entire proposal, drop a comment down below with a link, let us know what's up, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, you know, with any laws and, and changes of laws or anything, especially having to do with the sport, the hobby that we love, um, I'm just trying to be here to notify y'all. That's all. Subscribe if you haven't. But please, if you have any information, drop that comment down there. We'll see you on the next one.